three goals today and go ahead and get started. And before we actually do any programming today, I'd like to uh, talk briefly about uh, what programming on the HP really is like. <clears throat> and there are actually four programming languages that are directly on your calculator. Now you can use C programming language to uh, program from your computer and then transfer over to the calculator, but I'm just going to be talking about things you can do directly on the calculator. Now, in the last video, we did this, which is just a direct manipulation of the stack. And that is an example of user RPL, or user reverse Polish uh, Lisp. So this RPL stands for reverse Polish Lisp. And that's what we are going to be dealing with in these videos. And it is the highest level um, of language on the HP, which means you have the least uh, direct uh, access and uh, kind of uh, direct, just, you know, least direct access with the uh, machine and what it's actually doing. But don't be fooled, um, you can still access the vast majority of functions and pretty much for every application that I can think of, user RPL is going to be enough unless you're trying to do some sort of crazy uh, application programming or something that um, involves uh, very intensive graphics or some sort of, uh, you just kind of want to go the extra mile. And that's for and that's system RPL. Everything can be accessed uh, through system RPL and because it's direct uh, machine language and the uh, system commands, the uh, if you add, subtract, um, all the things you do on here, all of those, all the functions of the calculator are programmed in system reverse Polish Lisp. And both user RPL and system RPL share some characteristics. You use the uh, stack for your memory, and so you're directly manipulating the stack when you do um, these functions. And that makes it very intuitive, and it makes it a nice little language, because all you have to do is simply remember how you do use your calculator normally, and that's all you have to do to know how to program. You just simply got to know the functions. Uh, lastly, we have assembler, and there are two assemblers. There is the Saturn assembler, which is because Saturn is the processor that's on your calculator, and we have ARM, which is a more generic assembler. And that's just direct machine language. And both system RPL and the assemblers, you have to compile these and they're faster than user RPL, but they're also a little more risky because you don't have the uh, error handling and um, you know your calculator could crash if you uh, program something wrong and there's no real way of uh, there's no real way of checking it for you because you know, that slows it down. That's why user RPL is slower. So that's just a, um, a, few, a little information about uh, some of the other, you know, just the, just the vast capability that you can do with this. And I compared this program we did last time to a macro in a lot of ways it is, but it is an example of the user RPL programming language. So user reverse Polish Lisp, and, which is great, and it gives you um, access to graphics, access to the plotting, the statistics, the calculus, and all the algebraic stuff, all the objects, strings, lists, etc. that you could ever want to do. And though it seems simple, um, you can really just go go really anywhere with this uh, platform. So let's go on to actually uh, program something. And today we have Simply, uh, we're just going to be learning about kind of uh, temporary variables. Temporary variables are great. They um, allow you now to uh, deal with um, names and uh, ideas instead of having to think about uh, what's on the stack. Now, in this last program, we have you know, square, swap. We swap the values in the stack. You have to remember what's going on in the stack while you're programming the, the uh, programming the uh, uh, yeah, Pythagorean theorem into the calculator. And that's great um, because you're just using the stack memory, but you can also use these temporary variables. And that means you can give these values a name, store them in um, different parts of memory, and 
That's great for making things uh, less complex, but you do increase your memory usage when you start to use these temporary variables and you start to have to program these in, you increase the size of the program and you increase memory usage. So for something like the Pythagorean theorem, it is much easier just to, well, you know, it's only two values, you're using you know, just two levels of the stack. There's no need to really use um, temporary variables because you don't have to really remember much to in order to accomplish this task. But I will use the Pythagorean theorem as a way to show how temporary variables work. So get ready for PYTH2, the next program. So our first thing we're going to do is let's visualize again what's going on in the stack. We have three and four, and we want to get the hypotenuse of a triangle with these legs. But instead of directly saying, OK, what do we need to do to the bottom value? What do we need to do to the top value? We're first going to put these into memory as temporary variables. And you need to use the right arrow to do this. This right arrow is actually is a command, and it puts, uh, it sets the uh, calculator up for uh, memory. And what you do after the arrow is say, well, I want, you put the names of the variables you want uh, afterwards. And that's this says, OK, well, I want A and B. I want to put values from the stack into A and B. And it takes uh, values from the top of the stack and puts them in these variables. So that means that it's going from the top of the stack down. So A is going to be 3 and B is going to be 4. And that's, in some ways, it's a little confusing because a lot of things you'd be doing it, well, don't you access the bottom of the stack first? That's why it's called 1. But that is... Uh, irregularity but it goes along with uh, it allows you to list the variable names in the order of the uh, values on the stack and so it's kind of useful now where do we use these variables you declare them and where do we use them so you use them in an environment you declare right afterwards so these inner brackets right here within these brackets you can use these a as a and b at will once you leave these two inner, pairs of inner brackets, once you go over here, or if you go before you declare the variables, you can't actually use A and B. It will be going uh, A undefined, what's that? So A and B are used in here. And so instead of having to say, oh, remember what's on the stack and declare them, we simply take two values from the stack, put them in A and B, and now we can manipulate A and B directly. So instead of squaring the value on the stack, we'll say square. A, we square A. So that's A squared. Now we have B. We square B. And there's no need to swap because we have both these variables on call. We add these two uh, squares together. And then we take the square root of them. And with that said, we're done because now we have the square root and we're finished with Pythagorean theorem. And just one more time, I'll go over what's happening right here arrow we're saying I want to take some value from the stack and put them into temporary variables we have two names over here A and B it's going to take uh, A from level 2 B from level 1 so 3 is A 4 is B if I had another variable then it would then it would take A from level 3 B from level 2 C from level 1 we don't we just need two values so you know A is 3 B is uh, 4 we're going to square A to 9. We're going to square B to uh, 16. We're going to add 9 and 16 together. That's 25. The square root of 25 is 5. And that's the end of the program. So enter the others on the stack. Um, we'll go ahead and give it a name. P-Y-T-H-2. Pythagorean Theorem 2. And we'll store it. And there it is. So... If I do it the old way with PYTHG, put the stack, we get 5. If I do the same thing with PYTH2, we also get 5. And so great. It's simply just another way to do the same thing, but using these temporary variables, and you can just, it's very easy to see what's going on here because you can see, oh, we're squaring A, and what is an A is this, and B is that. And you can name these things like leg one or leg two. It doesn't have to be A and B. It can be any name you want. 
And it's very easy. It reduces, like I said, it reduces the complexity of the program because you can see what's going on a little better. But, like I also said, it does increase the memory usage. PYTH2 with the temporary variables is 45 bytes, while we have PYTHG, or original program, with 22 bytes. And that's about double the size. Imagine if you had a huge application that was doing things with graphics and you decided that all the values would be temporary variables and that would increase the size of the program a ton. Whereas if you just keep the values in the stack and remember how to manipulate them, it would be expedited, expedited somewhat. So there are some pros and cons to it. And for the Pythagorean theorem, it really would not be the uh, best idea to use temporary variables simply because it's just such a simple function already. You can easily see what's going on here, even with the swap. You can just visualize, okay, there's, you know, what's going on in the stack. And I would like to now go on to an example where it's a little harder to visualize exactly what's going on. I'm going to show this with uh, the binomial probability density function. And this is um, this is how you calculate uh, probability in a situation where you have something, you have an action that has a set probability, and you do the action a number of times, and you and you succeed in the action a number of times. So you have two numbers, and you have probability. So we have a number of trials in. If I flip the coin ten times, I have ten trials. The probability of getting heads or success or succeeding in the uh, trials is 50 percent or 0.5 half um, and if you succeed two times then x number of successes is two so i want to calculate how much uh, the probability of this is what is the probability that i would receive uh, two heads if i flipped 10 coins and this is what this function does if you didn't already know that. And so the first thing we'll do is, like before, like with any program, you got to declare these, uh, or uh, put these uh, special brackets onto the screen, and we'll edit it right here. No need to go into the editor. So with the arrow, we'll declare, and remember, we have three variables. We have the number of trials, the probability, and we have the number of successes, and we'll just use the same names. We'll do n, p, and x. Now, the next thing in our last program was to put another uh, set of brackets inside here for another uh, block of RPL code. But there actually is something else, an alternative to this, something else you can do besides putting a block of code inside there. And I'd like to do that right now. We have, instead of doing a block of RPL code, you can actually do a block of an algebraic um, equation or symbolic uh, expression. And we'll just put the ticks. And as you can see, the algebraic input um, enunciator comes on, and we're ready to enter an algebraic mode. And with the temporary variables, because you don't have to, because RPN works with the stack. When you do things with RPN, you simply manipulate the stack. But with algebraic, there's no way to manipulate the stack. So these temporary variables allow you to actually use algebraic because you can put the variables inside an algebraic expression and the variables will evaluate to their temporary um, values. So you can just use an algebraic expression. That's what we'll do here. So the binomial probability density function, the first thing we have to do is do a combination of the number of trials and the number of successes. We have to multiply and simply, I'm just, with this algebraic input on, I'm able to simply enter um, an algebraic expression like I would with the parentheses and the functions and whatnot. Instead of doing n, x, com combination, I'm doing combination of n and x with the comma parentheses. I'm doing it times like that. It's, uh, as you can just do this very symbolically. It also makes it easy to read and understand what's going on in the program. And this is all made possible by our temporary variables. So we have P, the probability to the X 
or the number of successes. And then we have parentheses. Oh, yes, those dreaded parentheses. 1 minus P, 2, the N, oh, the parentheses. I'm not used to having to do parentheses. N minus X. And because this will evaluate with these variables, with these temporary variables stored, the values will be substituted right in. It will evaluate to the number we need. We can just, or the probability that we need, we go ahead and enter. We're done with the program. We'll store it. Not going to store it in an already thing. We're going to store it in a new variable. We'll call it simply B P D F for binomial probability density function store. All right, and so with that program stored, we're able to, I'm just going to go over it one more time. We take our number of trials, our probability, and number of successes from the stack in that order. So level three, level three would be the number of trials, level two would be our probability, and level one would be our number of successes. We take that off the stack and we evaluate the function, the combination, the uh, various things we did here. The variables are substituted in with further values and we just get the result. So let's go ahead and do this. 10, half, and two, like I said, 10 trials, each with a probability of one half, two successes, BPDF, and looks like our probability for getting two heads out of 10 uh, coin flips is about 4.4%. And there you have it, uh, temporary variables. I hope that this lesson has helped. Um, if there's anything you want to comment about, if you want to correct me in any way, say, well, Davis, you didn't notice this, or you... Um, so this other thing that you can do, uh, please comment. I'm still learning about programming myself. Been doing it, you know, only for a few years here. So just uh, establish a dialogue, and we'll uh, get together on it.